Hi friends, it's Kendall, um, and I'm here to talk to you about habitats a little bit more. Um, it's really one of my favorite things. So, if you remember from the last session I did, I asked a question at the very end of it, which was, which land animal has the broadest habitat on the planet? You know, which animal makes its home in the widest, the most diverse set of environments? And if you answered humans, people, us, you guessed right. Uh, humans, people are capable of living in all sorts of different kinds of places and making our homes there. Um, from the very hottest to the very coldest, some dry and wet, we do really well. And the reason why we do really well is that we've got some really extraordinary adaptations. I'll be talking about adaptations in another session, but it's a good word to kind of be thinking about. So for this week's activity, what I'd like you to do is take a micro hike. Micro hikes are something I really love to do because it forces me to slow down and really look at what's going on in a habitat. They can be done on a regular hike or on a walk around the neighborhood with your family or, or dog. Uh, they can even be done in your own yard. And it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is define a, a small area about the size of what can fit into a hula hoop. And you're gonna get down and really look, make observations. Um, see if there's other evidence of animals being there, insects, bugs, um, things growing up out of the ground. It's a great time to do a micro hike because there's so much happening in the spring. Um, while you're down there, I'd like you to think about three really important roles in a habitat. The first role is that of a producer. A producer has the unique ability to take the energy from the sun, pull it into itself, create sugar out of it, and store that sugar in its cells. Um, producers are things like uh, plants uh, that are like grasses, uh, trees, bushes, green beans, tomatoes, um, even algae is a producer. The reason this role is important is that you and I, we can't use the sun um, to live and grow. We, we, we can't take the sun with a little water and some nutrients from the soil and grow. What we need to do is we need to consume uh, producers or consume other consumers who are consuming the producers. Uh, that means we are consumers, and so are frogs and fish, birds, deer, porcupines, uh, insects. Um, those are consumers in habitat. The final role that's really important and most often overlooked is that of the decomposer. Decomposers take dead material, either dead producers or dead consumers, and break them down and put all of that energy and nutrients back into the soil. It's really important that we have decomposers. Um, if you've been with me before, um, I might have asked you a question, which was, imagine what the earth would look like if everything that ever died never went anywhere. It just sat there. It's gross. So we're really lucky to have these decomposers. And decomposers can either be fungi, bacteria, or insects. These are our FBI. Um, so when you see insects, 
uh, or you see things that are decomposing, logs that are decomposing, leaves that are decomposing, you'll know that your decomposers have been hard at work. So keeping these things in mind, uh, go ahead. I invite you to take a micro hike or two or three. And if you do two or three, compare the different micro hikes. Is more happening in one area? Can you find all sorts of different things going on than other areas where maybe only one or two things are going on? Why do you think that is? So have fun, and um, I look forward to talking with you again. Take care. Bye.